Yes, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman, Alfred. I'm Batman. I am Batman! I'm Batman. Greetings, Bat Family. Welcome back to Holy Batcast, brought to you by real fans for real movies. Please visit our website, holybatcast.com. It's where you're going to find episodes of this show, as well as links and videos, all kinds of good stuff. And we are all over the internet. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Just find Holy Batcast on any of those platforms, and you will find us. We're the only ones. Uh, special shout out to YouTube. Our goal is to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So if you've not checked out the youtube page please do um and just give a little hit subscribe that would really help us out i appreciate that uh anyway if you are a fan of the show another way you can support it is on patreon you can go to patreon.com slash holy and uh, become a more permanent member of the family so because of that i've got to thank some of our more recent patrons uh first of all i'm surprised that he's a newish patron i didn't expect this but Stuart busire who we have heard from quite a bit uh thank you Stuart, for uh, making a contribution to the show also jason carver and then randy hayden so randy Stuart, and jason thank you guys so much and thank you to everybody who does keep the show rolling uh through patreon we could not do it without you uh we are working on trying to get some better rewards for patreon um me and my buddy wes uh who is the the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. We're trying to figure that out. So please be patient, um, but we want to make sure that uh, it is worth your while. So again, huge thank you. Patreon.com slash Holy Batcast. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Andy DiGenova. If you'd like to follow me on social media, one media, when I'm not talking about Batman, you can find me on Instagram and on Twitter just by searching my name, Andy DiGenova. And also please check out all the other shows that are part of the real fans podcast network. So you can check out RF for RM real fans for real movies, the original show, the one that started it all. You can also check out, uh, disorder every Disney film where we're looking at every Disney animated film in order. And then the newest member of the family, Please rewind the RF for RM retro show where Jamie, Tim, and Guy are looking at older movies and celebrating those. So check out all those at rf4rm.com or you can just search for them by name. Now this episode, uh, we're just going to be catching up on some news around the DC universe and then we're going to answer a buttload of your questions by cracking open the Wayne Manor mailbox. I swear you take one week off and forget about it. Um, Fortunately, I've got my partner in crime here to join me, someone who just had a birthday, Mr. Jamie Drewley. Happy birthday, buddy. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. A little, little older, not so much wiser, definitely a lot grayer. <laughs> well, one thing at a time. Right. Uh, I did see I did see the gray beard because we actually hung out in person. I know. Last I week. Know it, it, it was our you know five-year anniversary of, since the last time we did it. So. I know. So I'll see you in 2023. Sounds about right. Great. Good. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you had a good birthday. I did. Awesome. Um, good. Well, uh, yeah, let's let's see what's going on out there in the world. And then we'll get to some emails. Um, first of all, it's not Batman related, but it's kind of cool, kind of weird and took me by surprise. Um, as we know, there is yet another DC TV show on the horizon uh, along. I mean, there's so many now, but the one I'm talking about is on sci-fi. It is Krypton. It is coming on March 21st. And USA Today gave us a look at uh, Brainiac, who is going to be in the show. There's also a there's also a little trailer that features Brainiac and then the still photo that's been making the rounds. And uh, Jamie. What was your reaction getting a glimpse of Brainiac for Krypton? I first saw the still photo on Twitter and I had to stop the guy that sent it out, which uh, I'm pretty sure was Ray from the flight cast is, is who I saw it from. Uh, I had to stop him and I said, is this legit? I, I had to figure out if it was fan made or not. He's like, no, this is this is a real thing. And then somebody put the link up for the the uh, trailer showing it. And I was like, oh, wow. So I I was taken back. I was shocked that uh, a TV series that's you know Superman centric, obviously, but not involving Superman, produces what might be the best looking live action Brainiac I've ever seen. 
Yeah, no actually, kidding. Actually, I forget forget might be. It definitely is the best live action Brainiac I've ever seen. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of competition. That's true. It's there, true. There have, he's not the Joker. There haven't been 15 versions that you can pick your favorite. Uh, have there been any real live action Brainiacs? Uh, my memory is really hazy on Smallville, but I got to believe he showed up there at some point. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He did. It was, uh, I think it was the guy from Buffy, Spike. I think he was Brainiac, but he was just looked like a guy. He didn't really go full on alien brainiac um yes he was on smallville i wonder i don't i don't know lois and clark well enough to know if he ever showed up there he certainly hasn't shown up in a movie which all fans have been like come on we've been waiting for this um i had the same reaction as you i saw just the photo and i went oh cool great fan made uh sculpture or bust good job and then i realized it was real and my reaction was well damn it i wasn't gonna watch this show I had already made up my mind. Not that I have anything against the show, but I got too many shows and I didn't need, I don't need to know much about Superman's grandpa. That was never a part of the Superman mythos where I was like, man, I really wish I knew about his grandpa. I was good. And uh, so I was like, no, I'm fine. Not taking out a new show. And then they show me this awesome looking Brainiac and I'm like, well, damn it. Now I'm going to have to watch the thing, aren't I? Yeah. And, and what really surprised me is, uh, the hero that's on the show, and God dang it, I can't remember his name now. Oh, I, I forget what the character's name. It's not a character I know. I unless it's like I know the name, but I don't know the character. And everybody was complaining that he doesn't look anything like what he looks like in comics and whatnot. Like he just looks like a regular guy instead mm-hmm. of like a dressed up costume superhero. Yeah. For the life of me, I can't even remember who it is. So, it's, so I, I guess I was surprised that, you know, I'd never seen any of the other photos or paid attention or trailers or anything else. So, but I remember people griping about him not looking right. And then they deliver this brainiac that's like off of a page. So it's like, oh, wow. So I went from absolutely not caring in the least to I set a reminder on my phone to turn my DVR on that night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got us. I mean, it's great. He looks great. He looks exactly like you want him to, right? Yeah. It's just too bad it's not a true Superman series, but who knows? Maybe it'll be really good and interesting. Yeah. I mean, hey, I'm willing to give it a shot. And they're already finding ways to sort of include Superman without including Superman, as oh. these shows tend to do. Well, yeah, because isn't I swear I saw a trailer where like they had Superman's cape, and it was like... A guy from the future who was like, oh, your grandson's going to become Earth's greatest hero. So, you know, they're they're really already trying to find ways to lean into that as much as they're allowed to. Well, I just <laughs> just full blown. Give us a Superman series. I mean, that that guy whose name I can't pronounce right. That's on Supergirl playing the character. I mean, is he busy? Does does he not have a, a 13 episode season commitment to do this here or? I mean, well, it's hard now that it's in the past, but I guess he could time travel. Um, so, yeah, excited for Brainiac, but the rest of the show, we'll see. Hopefully it'll be a nice surprise. But yeah, uh, I mean, I, did, I didn't figure Black Lightning would be worth the crap, and look how that turned out. So. I know. You got my attention. I'll give it a shot. Lord knows I, you know, I do nothing else with my time. I might as well give up another hour to watch superhero TV. Hey, since since I brought it up, I'm just going to slide it in here. Are you current on Black Lightning? I think I'm an episode behind. Okay. Because last, not last week, but the week before, because they went on break for the Olympics, probably the best episode since the pilot. So the the consistency of this show is is very good. Yeah, I've been really happy. I think I'm I'm definitely at least three episodes in. I might be four because I feel, I know there's at least one that I haven't watched yet. So uh, whatever that is. But, uh, But no, it's been great. I love it. Someone wants us to do like weekly reviews and I'm like, I, I appreciate the request. It's probably a tall order to fill, but I, I, I would totally do a podcast dedicated completely to that show. But for the love of God, I don't have enough time in my day as it is. Ex- so. Exactly. When are we going to do that? Come on, Jamie. We'll, we'll just do periodic catch ups on. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, moving from uh, TV to the big screen, uh, we've got another little tidbit about this Joker origin movie. So we talked last time about Joaquin Phoenix being rumored to be taking the lead. And now uh, we got some news from this is from Jeff Snyder. And uh, is that Zach's cousin or 
No, he is a reporter. <laughs> um, it's not a name I know. So I'm just I know his name. Says. I don't know where I, I forget where he works, uh, mm-hmm. but I do. I do know the name. He actually I think he might be off on his own now. I think he used to be with one of the big publications and then he's trying to create his own thing, as most of these guys have been doing. Um, anyway, he released this document and it's like a, like a production document for this Joker origin movie. And according to this document, they want to go into production on May 1st of this Ooh, year. Jesus. Wow. And now of course anyone could have typed up this document in theory, right? It's certainly possible. But uh quite a people quite a few people have ran with this. Uh they the document is dated uh from December. And uh, the only cast member it has is Joaquin Phoenix and it says interested. It doesn't even say confirmed. So I don't know. I mean, of course you take this with a huge grain of salt, but, uh, there is a possibility that this thing that when it was announced, I was the first one to go. Yeah, we'll see if anything ever comes of it. Um, doesn't seem to be dying. It it keeps coming back. We got the Joaquin Phoenix rumor, which hasn't been confirmed, but then two weeks later we get this rumor that, Oh yeah, they want to go into production this summer. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I guess it's possible that casting and, and crew and everything else is all much further along than what we know, but it seems to me that, well, I mean, as there, there's, there's two sides to it. I mean, on one side, you would think that WB would want to have something to talk about other than justice league at this point. But on the other side of it, maybe they're trying purposely to keep everything under wraps just so they can distance themselves as far as possible before getting to really talking about it and, and in any official capacity, I should say. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, it would seem strange to me that you're 60 days out from production. Don't have a confirmed signing for the, the lead role. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but <laughs> frankly, nothing about this project makes a lot of sense to me from go. So, yeah, I mean, they would have to get a lot of ducks in a row in the next two months to start on May 1st. Like so, I say, unless they've already got them and they're just really good at hiding the details. But. Right. I mean, yeah, that's true, too, is they could have they could have a lot of that stuff and they're ready to make some sort of announcement. But, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, I'm just surprised that, again, this one keeps rearing its head. Uh, as we talked about when the Joaquin Phoenix news came out is I. I haven't really changed my position. I'd much rather this be news about Nightwing or or something else that I'm more excited about. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. I'm, I'm along for the ride, but I'm certainly not anticipating it. Right, right. Feels like I'm saying that a lot about this thing. I know. <laughs> it's That's kind of where we are, you know? All we can be as honest is, yeah, okay, I'll give it a shot. Um, well... The next movie that is coming out is Aquaman. And apparently there was a test screening of Aquaman this week for like the first the first cut. Now and nobody called me. God dang it. <laughs> I, I, my invite got lost in the mail, too. But uh, anyway, uh, there's there have been some reports coming out Uh about kind of what, you know, what's going on here. Um, nothing super spoilery, which is good. Uh, but it was described as an emotional action movie. It's a tone, a tone similar to wonder woman. Uh, there's humor, but there is, but it's more of a drama and definitely elements of horror. Uh, underwater battles, scary monsters, emotions, an amazing villain in Orm. Uh, Mara is very much a co-lead and not just a love interest. And this is all coming from uh, Batman News. So give credit where credit is due. He talked to he apparently talked to some people who were at the screening, and this is what they told him. Um, and then uh, again, no big spoilers. Characters do talk underwater. No giant air bubbles like Justice League. Jason Momoa does wear the classic Aquaman costume. Black Manta is a secondary villain, but he looks exactly like he does in the comics. The Trench is in the movie. uh, And Aquaman can talk talk to fish, which we should know. 
Um, and it seems like he held back on any additional spoilers. To me, none of those are spoilers. It's all what you expect. Uh, because James Wan himself even said something to the effect of there'll be no air bubbles to speak in my movie. When Justice League came out, he said something like that. We already saw that that action figure and heard rumors about the classic Aquaman outfit. Um, Black Mantle looks just like he does in his comics. I should hope so. <laughs> um, the trench being in the movie has been pretty well uh, rumored up till now. So, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything spoilery, but it all sounds real good. There ain't a single thing on that list that I don't want to see. I agree. It sounds awesome. So, um of course, is all of this, you, you take it all with a grain of salt, but it does sound like there were multiple sources who, who talked about seeing the movie. And so, uh, it's exciting. Yeah. There, I, I couldn't agree more. I'm, I'm ready for this movie and we still got what nine months to go. That's depressing thinking about that. I know <laughs> it sure is. God, it's cl- actually closer to 10 months now that I think about it. Cause isn't this like the week before Christmas? Yeah. It's December 21st. Oh, sun's up. God. Oh, I know it's going to be a long haul, but it'll be here before we know it. Yeah. But all, all sounds good. I'm excited. So I'm, I'm definitely on board for it. I yeah. Just, my, my favorite thing in all of that. I mean, I, I love the sound of all of it, but my favorite thing on all of that was Mara being a co-lead and not like a secondary type character. I knew you were going to say that. I, I, I like the strong females, man. What can I tell you? I know. I hear you. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, here's the here's the thing though is we might have to wait ten months for the movie, but we're gonna have to wait way less than that for our first look at the movie. Uh, just give me a trailer about September October, I'll be good. I don't need anything before that. Well, it's gonna come. It's gonna. I know it's going at, to at the latest it. in July, but I think we'll get it before then. I think yeah, we'll probably yeah. get it in time for summer. Uh, you know, for the summer movie season. I, I am of the opinion you can shorten the distance between a trailer's release and a movie's release and, and I'll, I'll be okay. I agree. I, agree. I don't need this year. I mean, six months I think is plenty, but that's just me. I know. Well, and I think that normally they do give us something a year out, but this time they did not. But I think that has more to do with distancing from Justice League than it does changing up their strategy. Mm, that could be. That's my guess. So I think, you know, they're waiting things to settle down. My guess is that we'll get a trailer in time for the summer movie season, because of course, everyone who's going to see infinity war, they want to see an Aquaman trailer. You know, Warner brothers is going to want all those people paying to the, go to the theater to see an Aquaman trailer before they see infinity war. Right. But I mean, even consider the distance between the infinity war trailer and its release or, you know, Solo, I mean, Solo's had its problems, so I mean, maybe that accounts for more of that. But, I mean, e- even the, the Disney films are, are seem to be shortening the distance between trailer and release of the film. So maybe Warner Brothers will follow that, too. And and, and this isn't a huge deal to me. It's just I, I don't like that you get something a year out, you get that hype built up, and then all of a sudden you get all that bad news that starts flowing in about something, and then things change, and then all the shit that was in the trailer doesn't even wind up in the movie, you know? Right. I, I think everybody <laughs> knows where I'm going with this, so shorten it down, tighten things up, and and get it a little bit more on point is, is kind of where I'd like it to be. No, I, I hear you. Uh... But you're right, they're, they're going to want it out probably by Infinity War at the latest. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the good thing is that with Aquaman, there hasn't been any drama surrounding it past that really initial pre-production thing where there were rumors that Juan might walk. Yeah. After that came and went, it's pretty much been smooth sailing, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and we we kind of got some confirmation about that from a, a solid source for it. But at the same time, it fizzled out as quick as it came. Like, I remember the initial report about it, and I don't really don't remember another word said about it after that. Yeah. And I don't know if that's just because people don't give a damn about Batman is, or excuse me, about Aquaman as much as they do like Batman or Superman or stuff. But I mean, that, that, that story was practically dead on arrival. What about James Wan? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it died because James Wan tweeted out a photo of himself in front of an Aquaman mural playing on his phone. So that's why it died. It didn't die because no one cared. You know, Zack Snyder could have done that too. And, they probably still would have. Yeah. You know what? I don't want to talk about that shit tonight. Well, what's what's next? 
James Wan and Zack Snyder, different situations. True, true. Um, but the Aquaman production really has had no issues that we have heard of, which is exciting. Um, the other movie that is in production right now, as we speak, is Shazam. Somewhere, right now, Zachary Levi is wearing a cape and red tights, and we haven't seen it. I'm but, also okay with that, but we'll, we'll we, see it we soon. know that's alive and well because uh, I never remember the guy's name. Sandberg? Sandberg. Yeah. He, uh, you, you talk about an active presence on social media. Yeah, he's he's been super engaging. And so he did say that the reveal will be coming soon, which is exciting. So something to look forward to that, I mean, literally could be any day, any moment. It could happen right now as we're talking. Right this second. Um, what well, what'll happen is he'll tease that he's going to unveil the the Shazam mobile, and then the next day it'll be a reveal of the Shazam mobile with Shazam standing next to it in full costume. Perfect. <laughs> uh, but apparently Sandberg did say that the suit has similarities to his look in Justice League War. Are we talking about the animated film or yeah. are we talking about the the book it was based on? Justice League War is only the animated film. But isn't that based on an arc in the New 52, though? It is, but that's not called Justice League War. It was well, just fine, Justice fine. League. All right. So, And I don't think Shazam was in that book in the comics. They added him for the movie. Oh, I see. That was when, because that was the new 52 reboot. So that was when Shazam was like the, he was at the end of every Justice League book as like a little extra. So he wasn't in the main Justice League book. Hmm. I think, I think what it was, was in the book, it was Aquaman. And in the movie, they held off on Aquaman and put in Shazam. So that way they could do Throne of Atlantis and introduce Aquaman in the sequel. I see. Um, so yes. Anyway, how does Shazam look in Justice League War? He looks like Shazam. There's, I mean, it's not super revealing because yeah, it's red and gold with the big lightning bolt on his chest and the white and gold cape. It's very classic Shazam. So I imagine we're going to get something very classic in the movie. I have no objection to this. So we're just going to hold and wait for that reveal. And then we'll do a whole episode being nerds about it. Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. Um, but a movie that we won't be seeing anytime soon <laughs> is Batgirl. And uh, this is the, uh, this is probably the biggest news. We should have done this first and just got the hell out. Of well, it. I'm doing it last on purpose because I feel like it's the one that has the greatest uh, possibility of spinning out of control. So I wanted to get everything else out of the way before we got to this. Uh, so as we know, Joss Whedon was uh, attached to write and direct Batgirl. That was the way it was announced. And then uh, that was announced. And then not long after it was announced that he was taking over post-production on Justice League, as we all know. Um, now Justice League has come and gone. And Joss has not said a word pretty much about either project ever since. And all of a sudden this week, the news came out that Joss is indeed stepping down and will no longer be involved in Batgirl. And here's what he told the Hollywood reporter. He said, Batgirl is such an exciting project and Warner's DC, such collaborative and supportive partners that it took me months to realize I really didn't have a story. Um, he said, I'm grateful to Jeff and Toby and everyone who was so welcoming when I arrived and so understanding when I, uh, is there a sexier word for failed? Um, and then Variety says this, the decision was mutual and Warner Brothers would like to find a female director for movies like Batgirl. So, yeah, that happened. Mm. Um, can we all raise our hands if we were shocked, if we were shocked by this? No, I wish nothing? I could say I was someone, someone in the back. Anyone? No. No, no. Someone's just scratching their nose. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, n I was never convinced Batgirl was real. And I didn't even say that for months out loud because I didn't want that to be the case. 
But the fact that they announced Joss Whedon writing and directing Batgirl, and then weeks later they announced, oh, he's taking over post production on Justice League. I just, I just, even then, I was like, was the Batgirl story just a way to explain why he was hanging out at Warner Brothers while he was figuring stuff out with Justice League? Was that what was going on? And I didn't want that to be true. I hoped Batgirl was real and that that was what was going to happen. And he was like, okay, he was going to do the Justice League thing and then jump on Batgirl. Um, and then Justice League came out and the proverbial shit hit the fan. And many DC fans were not very complimentary to Joss Whedon following Justice League. And he has just taken a beating on social media ever since. And uh, so at that point, I was like, and, and there had been no additional word about Batgirl at any point during all that. So I was just like, I was just kind of waiting for this to happen. Um I will say I'm probably the rare DC fan who's a little bummed that this happened because right now it seems like most DC fans want Joss's head on a spike. I still like Joss Whedon. Um, I still think he did the job he was hired to do with Justice League some at some points more successfully than others throughout the film. But um, I blame Warner Brothers for meddling with Justice League more than I blame Joss for trying to do the best he can with Justice League, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, And then we just lost two two thirds of our audience. I'm sorry, guys. Best of luck. I love you all. (laughs) Um, I mean, you you still got me here and I I agree with you. I I I, I've been sitting around wondering for like. I don't know, probably well over a year. I mean, well before any of his involvement with DC movies or, or Justice League came about, when exactly did it become the cool thing to hate Joss Whedon? I don't, I don't know. Because I don't remember this being the case even during the time of like Age of Ultron, even for all the disappointment that a lot of fans had for Age of Ultron, even myself included. It was never a, oh, piss on Joss Whedon's mother's grave over this kind of thing. It was just like, you know, I didn't like the movie, but... You know, I still love Avengers 1. Uh, you know, I, I'll probably get hung for this on site. I like the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. I've never really watched the TV series, but I hear good things about it. I just, it seemed to me like the the world of geek really loved and embraced Joss Whedon. And then just like overnight, a switch got flipped and now, you know, screw him and everything about him. I, 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 just, I know, I know. I don't understand it. I really, truly don't. I I'm with you. I I feel the same way. Like, I'm like, I like Joss Whedon. Some of his work I like more than others, but that's fine. But I I mean, you can make that case for pretty much any writer. Yeah, I I can make that case for Steven Spielberg. Okay. I mean, (laughs) you know, Um, but like, I like Joss and Joss is someone who has always championed strong female protagonists in all of the media that he creates. And so the Batgirl decision to me made a lot of sense where I was like, yeah, like, Um, Of course, you know, I'd be psyched to see a female filmmaker take this and run with it. I hope that's what happens. I hope that the project is not dead. Um, But, you know, if you are going to have a male writer director do a Batgirl, I thought Joss Whedon was a strong choice because, again, he is someone who created Buffy, who created uh, all the the badass women in Firefly. You know, like he's that's that's something he has always worked towards. And so I was like, yeah, like I, I didn't feel that Batgirl was in bad hands with Joss Whedon. And I feel like, I feel like most of that backlash, God, I feel like, I feel like most of it happened right around justice league. I feel like maybe there was, even when it was announced that he was doing Batgirl, I don't remember seeing it then. I, I saw. Plenty was it, of it? Was there, was there, you know, I, that, I, that I, early? I, I, yeah. I, I remember, it honestly, man, I, I don't read enough stories about these people's personal lives. And, and, you know, obviously this was pre, you know, the, the dealings with Weinstein and what happened after him. But, you know, there were, there were some statements made, I guess, about his, his ex-wife said about him or something. And oh, yeah, people yeah, on yeah, Twitter yeah. were accusing him of being like a misogynist and, and just, <sighs> I I don't know what to make any of that. I don't know this guy. We don't go out for beers or anything. I'm just judging him off of his work. But it it seems to me that was around the time where the narrative flipped and 
instead of people saying, well, yeah, Firefly was great or, or Buffy the series was great because I'm the only one that seems to think the movie is great. So I mean, what the hell do I know? Or, or Avengers 1, I mean, it seemed to me the entire freaking world loved Avengers 1 and now it, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people saying, well, you know, this movie's messed up and flawed and it's not even one of the best Marvel movies. It's like, you know, when that shit came out, everybody was all over that. So I... I, I'm about as anti-Marvel as most geeks will get in a lot of cases, but man, even, even I'll tell you, I still think that's one of the best comic book films ever made. Uh, maybe not structurally necessarily, but surely on an entertainment or, or you know, quote unquote, comic brought to life level, I think it's fantastic. This, uh, I, I, I don't know what to say about it, man. It just. That, like, you know, that's what it was. That was want a reason to be mad at him. And I don't think they want to be mad at him for the right reasons. Right. Right. No, that's what it was is his ex-wife wrote this manifesto just torching him. And, uh, because I feel like ex, that was when it happened. Spouses are always the best source of material where you're going to get something out of somebody. Yeah, exactly. Like, consider the source not saying she's lying i'm also saying she's extremely biased to, and that's neither here nor there like i um that's between the two of them and i kind of you know uh regardless like yeah i i do remember that and i do think you're right i think that's when a lot of people started to turn on him and then justice league kind of was the the other shoe dropping um but i mean e even looking at his his more current works with the the marvel universe Black Widow, I don't think is a is an incredibly well developed character, and I certainly don't like Scarlett Johansson in the part. However, I don't think he's done anything with that character to lead me to believe that he does not have strong feminine interests in mind with a character like that. Right. If that makes any sense. So mm -hmm. I, I don't have any objection with him taking on Batgirl. I mean, obviously it's not going to happen now, and I don't certainly don't have an objection with like a female director taking over. But my point is. I don't see where Joss isn't qualified to have done it if he was going to stay on the project. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I was, I was all for it. Um, but again, after, after the beating he has taken, I, I, I never thought he would go through with it. Actually, I discussed this with Mark Hughes a couple episodes ago and he even said, he goes, you know, I think Joss will probably stay on as a producer, but they're going to hand it off to a, a female director. And, uh, I, I and, can't help but notice that Mark dropped Sorsha Ronan's name in the uh, mix for. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm, you guys can give, all give me a letter of compliment for that if it happens. Right. <laughs> so, um, I, but I will also say the the reason I'm not sure Batgirl was ever real, and that doesn't mean it can't become real. If one, you know one of these these really great female director up and comers want to take it, I think it can become real. But part of the reason I'm not sure it ever was was he said, "Oh, it took me months to realize I didn't have a story." What? Like this is a man who has a million that stories. Sounds this is it's so flimsy. Flimsy, yes. So flimsy as an excuse to why he's walking away. I didn't really have a story, really, Joss Whedon. Who well, see that seems weird to me because, <laughs> and I don't remember if it was him saying it or if it was just speculation. But I I recall the narrative being formed that he was going to base a lot of it on the Gail Simone New Fifty Two run. I remember that rumor too, but I don't remember where it came from. So, that's, the, that's the part that excited me most because I've always liked Batgirl as a character, but that runs what made me fall in love with Batgirl as a character. Well, and I didn't have a story, you know, go down to your friendly neighborhood comic book shop. There's hundreds of them for you to choose from. Right. You can just choose one. You, you could even Google the best one and go from there. So that's why like, I'm like, the excuse is so weak that I have a really hard time believing that that's really what's going on here. I think he was hired to fix Justice League. They used Batgirl as a cover. Justice League is come and gone. They're all licking their wounds. And he's like, all right, well, I did what I could. See you guys later. And that's it. And and they don't think, you know, having him stick around even on another project is a good idea at this point. I mean, is he that toxic to everyone, including the studio? Well, I don't know if it's them. It might be him. You know, like he, he might be like, again, after the, the, bl the blame and beating he has taken for justice league, deserve it or not. I could just see him being like, I don't need this. I don't blame him. That's exactly what happened with Marvel after age of Ultron. He went, I don't need this. And so if he, if he bailed, I'm, I ain't mad to do, do what he wants to do, but 
I, the the guy's talented enough. I I certainly would like to see him work on something along those lines. I agree. And you know, obviously, there's fans out there that don't hold that opinion, and you know, that's everybody's got their own opinions. Yeah, I know. I um, I I just think it's it's a waste or a loss. But I can can I tell you a little secret? Well, sure. For, for everybody for everybody out there, because I you know, I I I check Twitter and then I hate myself for doing it, but. Daily, still, there are fans out there just berating Joss Whedon. Daily, like for Justice League. And some of the things they're heaping on Joss Whedon, I got a secret to tell you, it was in the original script. It had nothing to do with Joss Whedon. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly amused by the fans who want to burn him at the stake for certain moments in the film that I know were not his additions. <laughs> I, I I had a tweet up in response to that being released within minutes, like within seven minutes of the story breaking as far as I could see. I have put a tweet up and I said, I don't know which I'm looking forward to more, the toxic fandom that, you know, wants to hang him by his toenails or the media spin that's going to say that this is another doomsday scenario for the DCEU. And by God, it wasn't five minutes after I put that tweet up that I had about 10 of each on my timeline. Mm, right. So. Whatever, man. I, I, if people genuinely don't like Joss for his work, then so be it. I mean, I, I get it. I, I march to a different beat for dr- directors and such that I like. So if, if you don't like Joss because of that, I get it. You know, I, I, I'm not mad about this. But if you just want to, you know, crucify him for Justice League or for shit that his ex-wife said about him, I, I can't help you. I don't. I don't even know what to say to you. So, yeah, I'm I'm there with you. But it'll be interesting to see if if anything happens with Batgirl from here on out. I, 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 I truly hope it does. I think that I, I is, me too. A, like I mean, is it's a, a it, great character, and I yeah. and I think it it fits with this narrative we've talked about for months now. She's. This this is going to come out sounding wrong. I know it is, but I don't know how else to say it. She's a simple character. She she doesn't require of a, a north of a hundred million dollar budget to make a good movie out of. Mm-hmm. Right. So I mean, there, there's no reason for them not to do it. Female characters are hot. With, you know, with Wonder Woman and the discussion of a Black Widow movie being made and Captain Marvel on the horizon. Uh, female character. I mean, Harley Quinn's now a proven commodity in film. There's no reason for them not to do it other than not having the right person to do it. Right. No, I completely agree. I mean, this is, this should be a a priority film. I hope it is. I hope that what we're hearing is true is that they're going to go out and find a strong female filmmaker with a strong point of view who's passionate about Batgirl and the movie's going to happen. I just, I just am not convinced that's going to, that's going to be what happens because alongside that, we also got news this week that Chris McKay, who's developing Nightwing He's talking to Paramount about directing a Dungeons and Dragons movie, which he also came out and said on Twitter, he said, no, the only way for me to not do Nightwing is if Warner Brothers fires me, which is great. I think he's committed to Nightwing. But the question is, is Warner Brothers committed to Nightwing? <laughs> I don't know. The honestly, If he's the- taking meetings with Paramount, they obviously are not pushing this thing ahead with any real speed. And and he said himself that he wanted to get make sure everything was right in line with it, and and who knows? Because if he goes off to do Dungeons and Dragons, that's at least a year of his life, right? At least. And then you know, obviously, the however long the production of Nightwing would be after the fact. Yeah. I mean, even if, even if they do a little bit of pre production before he gets out there, you're still talking at least two and a half years before it hits a screen. Right. From from right now, anyway. Yeah, so I was really hoping that that was, I mean, it seemed like that's all he was focused on. He's another one like David Sandberg. He's so great about engaging with people online, with fans, and I love that about him. And but you know, last we heard, he's like, "Oh, you know, I'm I'm putting together this sizzle reel, and I'm the script is is coming along, but it's a process, and all that's great." It seemed like he was focused on it. Then out of nowhere, oh, he's talking to Paramount about Dungeons and Dragons, which means, well, like Nightwing's not. Even if it's a priority for Chris McKay, it doesn't sound like it's a priority for Warner Brothers if they're going to let their director go work at Paramount for a couple of years. Well, you know, I, it's disappointing that it's not going to be as fast as maybe we'd like it to be. But 
here's the thing I figured out, and and this is not trying to disrespect the character of Dick Grayson in the least because he's you watch yourself a, a classic watch historical it. character. And tread lightly, Julie. Tread. I'm, I'm not lightly. Listen, let me finish. Let me finish. No, he he's a beloved <laughs> character, and I I fully get the reasons he's beloved, but. I've read Nightwing since Rebirth started, and I've read a little bit of Nightwing prior to the Rebirth stuff just to see if I could get myself out of the the idea that I don't seem to know what's going on. And I'm not sure anybody knows what the hell to do with this character, man. I really am not. At least Ooh. as far as the comics are concerned. I mean, if somebody's got a great idea for a movie, that's one thing. But it, it look, doesn't look to me like anybody has a clue what they should be doing with this character in comics. Well, you're not... You're not terribly wrong. Because, yeah, like, the comics have been fine, and, and some are better than others. But you're right. Like, there has never quite been, like, a truly epic nightwing wrong run that i can think of so i mean what's the one that everybody came back to when we were asked what the great ones were and we couldn't really come up with one and then the the fire back that we got was the judas contract judas contract which like and yeah that's okay what, 35 years old now <laughs> right right and his introduction yeah Then obviously he's had some appearances in, in animated shows and whatnot. There's there's good stuff out there for him. I mean, I've I've liked a few of the issues of the Rebirth run. I'm just saying it doesn't seem to me like there's any clear status for this character and what to do with him. I mean, like I don't want to see a movie where they turned him into a goddamn secret agent. I do not want anything to do with that. No, I don't think many other people do. Either, it, that but, didn't last long. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. You, you see what I'm saying though? Yes. Like they, they keep trying to find that they, they've got an identity crisis with them and they can't recover from it. They, they mm -hmm. don't know what to do with this character. And, and the books to me have progressively, honestly, gotten worse for the most part. So if they have that kind of a struggle writing the character for comics, then I can only imagine what the struggle would be like on a screen. Mm -hmm. Right. So may, well, maybe that maybe that's just legit where they're at is they've tried working on it for this long and they just don't know what to do with it. So now they've kind of pushed it back further on a different burner to open up the door for him to do Dungeons and Dragons or whatever their other project and try and iron out their own identity as a studio in the meantime. Well, that's, my just, other, that's just my own speculation. But My other question is maybe Batgirl and Nightwing get kicked down the road a bit because they're waiting to see what Matt Reeves does with Batman. Since it all ties in together, they don't want to put Batgirl or Nightwing ahead of Batman and set some sort of weird status quo that Matt Reeves either has to ignore or then adjust to. Mm, that makes sense. So I could see them being like, okay, we're going to, we're going to put these on hold. So Matt Reeves can do what he wants to do. And then we'll revisit them and figure out how they fit into the picture. Mm. That's an optimistic view, but possible. I don't think it's a completely unfounded one, honestly. Because it makes sense, you know, if Night, you know, Nightwing went into production end of this year, came out next year, Matt Reeves' Batman comes out the year after, you're going to get the Nightwing before you meet the new Batman, like, it gets a little trickier. Right. And if they're going to, however they would finagle it to make a young Batman to replace Atfleck with, you know, obviously if you get a younger Batman, chances are you would have a Robin before a Nightwing, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't really had a proper good fleshed out Robin on a live action movie screen. So, Oh, I'm well aware. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I don't know. There, there's obviously any number of directions they could go with this, but frankly, I think your, your Matt Reeves, Batman taking precedence and setting the tone might well be the strongest case I've heard yet for why. Yeah. Well, let's, let's hope that's the case that that's what's going on here. Cause then that's something it's hard to be too mad at. Because it's like, no, we want to establish the new Batman world first before we start looking at the the side character solo films. So I hope that's the case. I hope we get to see a Batgirl movie. I hope we get to see a Nightwing movie. I mean, these are things that they're, they'd be awesome. I'm so in for them, and I, I hope they remain on the, the radar. 
But regardless, if we don't get Batgirl and we go don't get Nightwing, at least we'll get an Elseworlds Joker origin. So that's something. <laughs> eh? But that that's not tied to the same thing. I mean, it's... I know, I mean, that's why I that said Elseworlds. They could do an Elseworlds Batgirl or, or Nightwing movie, too. That's a, God damn it. I, I don't know <laughs> what the right, right answer is. It all gives me a headache. But, uh, I mean, and, this is, and, and they could avoid all of this if they would just make a Blue Devil movie. Because it can true. be its own damn thing. It's that simple, guys. And and here they are trying to work on a Lobo movie in addition to this. So, I mean. Well, and maybe, that, maybe that the, could be maybe the that could be really is that they're confused because they've got two friggin many characters that they can pick from and they're not restricted because somebody other studio owns the rights to the ones they really want to use. And they're they're just baffled by it. It could be. And I mean, and the reason maybe Lobo is the one that they're looking at because Lobo doesn't have to be attached to or affected by any of the any of these other movies. So while they're figuring their stuff out with the greater DC films universe, Lobo can be off and be its own weird thing and they can just push forward on that and they don't have to know what else is happening. You know, it gives them a little freedom. Yeah. Who knows, man? Nobody. That's the answer. Nobody knows shit. All we can do is guess. <laughs> In the end, nobody knows nothing except for the people who pretend. Uh, but uh, anyway, J- Joss, being part of the DC family for uh, not even a year, um, fare, fare thee well. <laughs> I hope that the next gig works out better for him. I wish the guy nothing but the best, honestly. So Yeah, me too. Um, all right. Well, there you go. All the news that's fit to print for now until the next time, until we get that Shazam photo. Um, oh, wait, you were, you were out of town this weekend and we didn't get a knock one man trailer. We, we know the status quo is messed up now. I know I did my part. So what the heck? What's going Maybe it's on because here? I was out of town with you and that countered the whole thing. Uh, that's exactly, that's why it's because we were, we were in the same place at the same time. Mm, I'm going with we that. We messed up the space time. Uh, we could have a major paradox. <laughs> All right. I well, totally uh, had Christopher Lloyd in my head when you said that. that well, was amazing. I, I should hope so. Um, all right. Well, now uh, that's enough of what we think. Let's see what you guys think as we crack open the Wayne Manor mailbox. Apparently, you and Batman have a common enemy. That was with the morning mail. Bum, bum, bum. Now, before we get to the messages from the listeners. I had an idea. Uh-oh. I had an epiphany. Lightning struck my brain. Um, and I did not get superpowers, but I got an idea. It's Because I got to tell you guys out there, I'm tired of listening to that audio clip from Batman Forever. I'm over it for the intro to the Wayne Manor mailbox. I'm done. And so I'm stealing an idea from another podcast I listen to and I love called How Did This Get Made? Um, where they have listeners create intros to some of their segments. And so I want to have a contest, an holy backcast contest. I'm going to ask you fantastic talents of listeners to help me create a new intro for the Wayne Manor mailbox. So here's what we're going to do. Create something. It could be a piece of music. It could be a little song. It could be a quote. It could just be a little edited together thing, kind of like what I was doing before. Whatever. Be creative. You know, something like 10 seconds-ish, somewhere in there, and send it to me. Send it to holybatcast at rf4rm.com and put Wayne Manor Mailbox Contest. Yeah, sure. Call it that. Um, And we can use them as intros and then... Jamie and I will choose a winner at the end of the contest, and the winner will get some sort of fabulous prize. I'm not sure what yet, but it'll be something cool, like a Blu-ray or something. Wait, do you mean to tell me my opinion is going to matter for something? I mean, I'll listen to it. Okay. I didn't say it matters. That's all I can ask for. I I feel so (laughs) important now. Um, But yeah, like I want you guys to be a part of the show. Help, Help me. Um, come up with something fun to introduce the Wayne Manor mailbox and it'll be fun to play them on the show. You guys can hear what your fellow Batcast listeners come up with. So again, put something together. 
10 seconds is uh, to me feels like a good amount. Um, and send those to Holy Batcast at rf4rm.com. And again, once we get all the entries, we're going to choose a winner, but we're going to play all of them on the show. So you're going to hear it regardless. Um, and I don't know, Jamie, it's the end of February. So what do you say? Maybe the end of March is, will be the cutoff. Maybe March 31st, a little over a month. I think that's pretty gives people a month. So yeah, you get till March 31st to send me a little intro to the Wayne Manor mailbox. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Um, yeah, it'll be fun. So please and thank you. Can't wait to hear it. Uh, now, let's hear what you guys have to say. Let's read some messages. This one is from Jason Ritter. It says, hey, Andy and Jamie. I hope you guys are having a great 2018 so far. I really enjoyed Scooby-Doo and Batman the Brave and the Bold. I was wondering, um, would you consider doing a commentary on the live action Justice League movie after it comes out on Blu-ray? And are you going to review Superman Doomsday before the Death of Superman movie comes out later this year? Keep up the good work from Jason Ritter. Uh, P.S. Go Eagles. <laughs> so this one's a few weeks old. Uh, thank you for the message, Jason. Um, a commentary for Justice League? Yeah, I would say eventually. Probably not immediately, but yeah, I think eventually down the road. Um, Doing Superman Doomsday, absolutely. I think we definitely need to do that before the new Death of Superman animated films come out. Uh, And yeah, that's what I got. Jamie, thoughts, feelings, comments? These are all great ideas, and I'm excited to be a part of them. Great. All right, next message here is from Cam Stewart. It says, I was wondering if y'all would ever consider taking a look back at the old Static Shock series. Because a lot of people forget Batman appeared on it more than once. The episode Hard as Nails comes to mind. It was Paul Dini written episode that featured Ivy and Harley. Batman and Static are two of my favorite heroes ever and add Paul Dini and you can't lose. By the way, I also loved the Black Lightning best show on the CW. Awesome, Cam. Um... We agree. We love Black Lightning. And I don't think I've ever seen the Static Shock where Batman shows up, but now I want to. Jamie, have you ever seen this? I have never read a single comic book panel with Static Shock, nor have I seen a lick of animated series of Static Shock. So I don't know anything about the character other than he seems to get an incredible amount of positive feedback, uh, especially in discussions that I have on Black Lightning that people all want him to show up on that series as well so apparently there's something to it i just i don't know it myself because i don't know the character at all from not having read or seen him yeah i've only seen like little clips of the show i never watched the show um if you had told me that batman was gonna be on it i would have watched it um but yeah so i can't speak to it either but now i like the idea of of digging up that episode and reviewing it on the show so i appreciate that cam uh, next message here is from Mark Jurasevic. It says, hey, Bat Lovers, what are your thoughts on the Metropolis prequel series? Shouldn't we have a Tyler Hawkland TV series instead? Number two, are you looking forward to Krypton? I am. Thanks for an awesome podcast, Mark. Um, Jamie, you go first. Metropolis prequel series, Krypton prequel series. Uh, we we talked about Krypton a little bit already. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to give that a chance uh, with the Metropolis show. I think I'll, I'll probably be willing to give that a chance too, but I'm not expecting it to be the same type of tones. But I, I again, have to ask the question. I, I'm with him. Why, why wouldn't we just get a full blown Superman series instead of two series that are clearly Superman related without Superman really showing up? I mean, it's, I, well, what, I, what do I know? WB doesn't pay me the money to think of this stuff. So, I completely agree. I mean, a Metropolis prequel series before Superman. Uh, I mean, I'll give it a shot. And, and I, I give them like all Lex a shot. And Lois are the main characters of this, are they not? Yeah. So, I mean, those are if not they... uninteresting characters to me. But how interesting are these characters without Superman? I mean, that that that's kind of my theme lately. Like Venom is not interesting to me without Spider Man. Joker's not interesting to me without Batman. How interesting are Lois Lane and Lex Luthor without Superman? How interesting is Krypton without Superman, you know, being the catalyst for Superman becoming Superman, you know, that far back in the past? I, 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 I don't know. I agree. I agree. I'll give it a shot, but it's hard to be excited if I know Superman ain't going to be around. Now, if I Zack didn't... Snyder was making a Krypton movie or something like that set in the same thing that he did with Man of Steel, 
you got my attention. If the show does much like what he did as far as designs and concepts and everything, it's got my attention. But I still have to wonder how much attention can be held without the main character that this show is based off of. Like Gotham does not hold my interest at all because mostly because Batman's not there. Like full blown true Batman isn't there. Right. Right. I hear you. All right. Well, thank you for the message. Next message here is from Todd Johnson. It says, hey, guys, I love the show. It makes my day every time a new episode appears. My question is, I'm 47, and I love the original animated series of Batman. Paul Dini is my favorite writer on the show, and also Harley Quinn is one of my favorite characters. In my opinion, in the recent animated movies, they really over-sexualize her character. I feel that they have really lost Dini's original vision. I don't know why you can't have a female character and not have it be sexualized anymore. I was okay with it in Suicide Squad but it just seems like the animated films should be more family oriented just wanted your thoughts keep up the good work todd jamie thoughts on this one <laughs> where do you even want me to start uh i i tend to agree for the most part um uh, i i think that sort of thing has its place and you know there's obviously various mediums that they they can put the stuff out in where you can have a little bit of it here but the other can be different you know like the, the superhero girl stuff obviously has an age bracket and then they have this goofball Harley Quinn that's more like, you know, a Deadpool type character that I don't like in the comics. So, I mean, there's there's many translations of it out there, but I, I'm with him. I mean, do we need that much of the over-sexualized female characters? I mean, not just Harley, but like any of them. I, I don't think we do, but obviously they must be doing something to gain people's attention with that because it seems to keep happening pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a, there's clearly a market for it, but I, I personally don't think it's necessary, but they don't make everything with me and my kids in mind. So I, I, I don't know. I, I think no. it's overdone. I, I really think it's overdone. Yeah. I, I hear you. Um, I don't, I don't have an issue with it per se, especially cause it's still always kind of been part of her character. I just reread Mad Love and at least starting with Mad Love, that was still a huge part of Harley's character. Um, but but and, there's 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 subtle ways to handle it and there's really not subtle ways to handle oh, it. Oh, exactly. And that's just it. It like shouldn't he, become... He, even, the stuff that, the, even the stuff that happened in the animated series about wanting to rev up your Harley, I, it, you, can, you can have the... What's the word I'm looking for? You can have the the insinuation of it there without being like blunt in your face about it, like where where it could go over a kid's head, I guess, is where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, that is directly from the Mad Love comic. Uh, but that's just it. I think it's like it can be there. It can be part of the character. It shouldn't become the defining characteristic of the character. There's more going on there. And if you're just leaning on that she's hot and that she's sexy, you're missing out on a lot of other stuff. And so I understand the concern. I don't disagree with it. I think it's okay uh, to have some of that because she is an attractive character. But you can't just, you know, just leaning on only that uh, just becomes a little lazy. Uh, next message here is just for you, Jamie. Oh, good. Just for you. <laughs> I can't wait. This is um, from Jordan Valdez. Oh, Lord. Here we go. <laughs> um, it says, hey, guys. Um, so as the subject line read, Batman and Cat... This is all in caps, by the way. Batman and Catwoman are getting married on July 4th in Batman number 50. I'm freaking out right now. Mark your calendars. The news just broke, and I'm crying, but I'm so, so happy. I now know what euphoria feels like. So much of Tom King's run has been a dream come true for me, but this is truly the moment I've been waiting for. I can't stop talking about it, and I just had to write into you guys because this seriously might be the single most excited event in the history of my Bat fandom. Fortunately, I was alone when the news broke, and I kid you not, I just did a happy dance around my house and screamed for a couple of minutes. Who am I kidding? I would have done that even if I weren't alone. Batman and Catwoman are my OTP, and I couldn't be more thrilled right now. Congratulations, Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle. <laughs> 
Um, to celebrate, I would love to hear you talk about some of your favorite bat cat moments over the history of their relationship. My top one in comics would be the proposal in Batman number 24. My top one in live action would be the kiss from the end of the dark Knight rises. My top one in animation would be the scene from Gotham by gaslight. Uh, and my top one in video games would be where Bruce takes Selena in the bat cave in Batman, the enemy within, uh, keep up the great work guys. Bat cat forever from the first kiss to the last Jordan. Um, he, he likes his Tom King, Batman, Catwoman stuff. And uh, there, there's a reason that uh, I call him Bizarro Jamie, because I could <laughs> not be any further on the opposite end of the spectrum from him on most things that I am. Jordan, I, I love your passion. Oh, the, the guy's enthusiasm is is very commendable. However, I don't agree with like 90% of his stuff. I appreciate that everything that ever comes out is the best thing that's ever come out for you. Uh, I, I genuinely wish I could get that excited about that many things. I really, really, <laughs> truly do. Um, do you have just a favorite Batman Catwoman moment? Just pick one. We don't have to do it by every every piece of media because that takes homework. Um, but do, do you, Jamie? Off the top of my head... Probably the end of Dark Knight Rises because in in an Elseworlds format, which I consider the Chris Reeves movie or Chris Reeves, Chris Nolan movies to be more of an Elseworlds tale, so I can you know be more flexible on what happens or doesn't since you know that exists all on its own and no other DC characters are really around. Uh, Batman getting that happy ending because he never wanted to be Batman permanently anyway. I can accept that, and by God, I absolutely adored Anne Hathaway in that role. So I'll, I'll just go with that because I can't that's, think of anything better. No, that's good. That's a good one. Um, for me, it's the, the dance in Batman returns when Bruce and Selena are dancing. Um, I just think it's one of the best scenes in any Batman movie. It's just the chemistry is there. It's kind of magical and weird and I love it. And it's a great um, song. And the song is good too. So yeah, I just I, for me that's just one of the high points of that movie. But it's also just a, a wonderful moment between the two characters, because um, it's also kind of tragic, which I love. And then um, the other thing that jumps to mind is the very end of Almost Got Him, the the episode from Batman the Animated Series when Catwoman ends the episode with Almost Got Him. So yeah. Um. All right. Thanks for writing in, Jordan. I, I um, hope Joker poisons that wedding. It can't last, just so you know. I mean, comics have to keep King, going. King King seems to like to off people. If, if he kills her off, I won't be surprised. And I, I can't wait to see the, the tears of utter agony if it happens. Oh, my gosh. Jordan will, will lock himself in his room for a week on end crying. He'll do a... He'll do a YouTube video with like the mascara running down his face, crying. I'll run straight about, back to the comic book shop about and buy the death of Bat Cat. <laughs> um, all right, next message here is from Clarence Eugene. It says, "Hey, it says, hey, holy Batcast family, what if the Salkins did a crossover between Superman the movie and Santa Claus the movie in the '80s? I'll tell you what. What would have happened? I would have died of pure magic." <laughs> it would have gone into my heart and given me a magical heart attack and I would have died with a big smiley Christmas grin on my face. I would have died from an overdose of Big Macs, Coca-Cola, and Marlboros. <laughs> um, and, uh, it's I mean, still, who it still floors me that Marlboro was in Superman. Just, hey, man. It's 1980. It's 1980. Um I, I mean, who wouldn't have wanted to see Gene Hackman's Lex Luthor and BZ, John Lithgow, sharing the screen together? There'd have been no scenery left. They would have eaten it all. Goodness gracious, that would be something else. It'd be amazing. Uh, well, only in our dreams. Um, and, and like the triggered Pavlovian response, somebody said Santa Claus the movie, and immediately I want McDonald's. God dang it. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, next message here from Joseph Stewart says, Hey, Holy Backcast family, hope you guys are having a great day. Who is your favorite cinematic Superman in all media? Well, if it's cinematic, there's only a couple. If it's all media, that's another the story. Brandon Routh, clearly. Well, duh. No, seriously, I mean, the easiest question I'm going to answer all day, mine is, is Henry Cavill. And I love Chris Reeves and... and Brandon Routh, I mean, he he did what he could with what he had to work with, so all due respect to that. Uh, I mean, I don't know if we're counting like all live action or just cinematic, so I mean, I, I used to watch the old black and white George Reeves show, so I, I have an, a, an affinity for that, and I like that, but I mean, it just uh, going through all of it, I don't like any of them more than I like Cabin, and I don't like any of the movies more than I like Man of Steel, so... All right. Um, I love me some Henry Cavill, but I, I still got I still got to go back to Christopher Reeve. But that's not to take away from Cavill. They're, you know, two different ones. But, do you know, just like how I'll, I'll always love Michael Keaton and Christian Bale mm-hmm. and Ben Affleck. Same kind of thing. I love Christopher Reeve. I like Reeve's I suit Henry better, Cavill. if that means anything. Yeah. So anyway, uh, next message here, Ulysses, Ulysses Jorge. It says, hey, guys, I love listening to you guys and Batman rules. My question is, have you guys read the Justice League Mortal script? Um, If not, then you guys should read it because it is intense. Maybe a review someday. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Ulysses. Um, I know I have not read it. I've obviously I've seen like high points about it over the years, but I've never gotten a copy of it to read it. But yeah, that would be fun one of these days to to get a hold of a copy and review it on the show. I like the idea. Jamie? Jamie? I have not read it. I was listening to a podcast and I want to say it was like Nerdist or something like that, that had uh, Adrian Brody on it. And mm-hmm. he kind of gave a rundown of a lot of those. Ad- points. Adam Brody. Adam. I'm sorry. Adam. Uh, yeah. he, he gave like a rundown of, of a lot of things that were going to happen in the film, particularly for the flash. And I, I was certainly intrigued by it. I, I would like to read it someday. I don't know when I'm going to find the time to do it because I'm so far behind on all the other reading I'm doing, but I, I would be interested to, to see it. it. It's one of those I would especially like to see adapted into like an animated movie format, like all these other movies that we never got totally. to see adapted into it. I, I would love to see this brought into that as well. I uh, completely agree. Yeah. Cool. Next message here is from Ben Hoffman. It says, hey, it's me. I was wondering a few things. Number one, do you enjoy or watch fan-made Batman movies or videos on YouTube or any other platform? Number two, if you're trying to gather up a canon timeline for Batman, which stories would you put in for any reboot, like the New 52, Rebirth, etc., in order for most of the DC continuities to coincide with older stories with newer ones? Sorry if this sounds confusing. <laughs> Number three, did you guys watch the deleted scenes of Justice League that were released? Um, well, the last one, um, yes, but we want to discuss that once the Blu-ray is in our hands, so we'll just leave that there. Um, so fan-made videos and then kind of DC, or excuse me, Batman canon and continuity. Jamie, thoughts? Uh, fan films, I've seen both versions of Batman versus Darth Vader. Uh, I've seen Batman versus Wolverine, which straight pissed me off. I've seen Batman versus <laughs> Deadpool, which really made me laugh hysterically. Uh, I've seen, I think the Batman and alien one. I'm pretty sure I've seen that, but I'm really fuzzy about it. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, I watch them. I enjoy them, but it's not like something I'm like super heavy into. Like, I don't remember a lot of details on, even the ones that I just mentioned other than basically how they ended, I guess is the only things I truly remember about them. Although the, I've seen the Batman versus Vader one numerous times. So I know that one pretty well. Um, right. As far as the continuity thing, I'm not sure I'm clear on how to answer that. Yeah. I, I think what he's saying is like, if you could like cherry pick from all the different years to make it all fit together into one continuity. It sounds like I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. Yeah. Um, I'm like you, like, yes, I've seen plenty of fan made Batman ones. I don't seek them out, but if they, if they're ones that kind of take off and I just randomly hear about them or, or come across them, then yeah, I'll watch them. Um, and so, yeah, I've seen a bunch of the ones that you mentioned over the years. Um, as for yet DC or Batman continuity over, 78 years um 
I think that's just a good way to drive yourself insane. <laughs> uh, so like, yeah, I mean, of course it doesn't all fit together. And if you wanted me to create my own version of the continuity, uh, that sounds like a hell of a lot of homework. So, um, I tend to just enjoy it as I do. And, uh, uh, it's, you know, things have changed in so much over the years that, you know, whatever you can like counts is it's continuity or canon for you. Is that a nice way of sidestepping that question that sounded really hard? No, well, that, that sounded pretty reasonable. Okay, good. Yeah, we're going with that then. And my, uh, right. my, I guess my answer now that I've thought about it for a minute is uh, wiping out Tom King's Batman run completely. Oh, you just you just want to crush poor Jordan's spirits, don't you? He knows. It's not like we haven't <laughs> talked about this. Um. All right, next message here is from Daniel Barham. It says, hey, Andy and Jamie, I enjoyed your review of Gotham by Gaslight. Andy, I know you said you enjoyed the turn of the century Gotham. I was wondering if you had read Gates of Gotham. It's been a while, but I remember if I remember it right, it's Scott Snyder and Dick is Batman. It goes back and forth from present day and flashbacks to the original architects of Gotham. It's been a while since I read it, so I hope I'm remembering it right. I do remember enjoying it. I recommend checking it out if you haven't. Um, that sounds familiar to me. So if I didn't read it, I at least have heard about it. Um, generally, I when Dick was Batman, um, that was pre New Fifty Two, so I wasn't regularly regularly reading comics back then. So I don't I don't know if I read that. But the way you describe it sounds like something I have read. Like I remember flashbacks to the original Architects of Gotham. That sounds kind of familiar to me. So. Anyway, if I read it, it's very, very, very fuzzy, but uh, it's good to know in case I want to go back and, and read a new story. Have you ever read this one, Jamie? Uh, the only uh, Grayson as Batman stuff that I've read was the Black Mirror trade. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, I just I, on the back end of that, I did read that uh, Master of the Future book not long after we watched the movie. Uh-huh. You want to talk about one hell of a fall from grace as far as from Gotham by Gaslight to that. I know you, you, it's easy to figure out why there wasn't a third, right? I didn't hate, I didn't hate master of the future. I I I just hate it. It just felt, it felt very like cheap and flimsy in comparison, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. It just felt like, it felt like any random issue of any random comic, like not bad, but just serviceable. Mm hmm. Like it didn't have anything super compelling or intriguing about it. It was just like, oh, like here's another random story with this guy we made up. It just, yeah, it didn't, it didn't have the strong premise of the original. No, not at all. Um, All right, next message here is from Grant Ingram. It says, hey, Andy and Jamie, I wanted to thank you for answering my last question. I picked up The Last Crusade and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, my question is, what would you think if Christopher Nolan had done a fourth movie following closely the events of the dark Knight rises since we know ledger was supposed to return as Joker and then kicked off a DC shared universe with Christian Bale as Batman. I personally wonder why Nolan didn't direct the DC movies after the dark Knight trilogy. Anyway, thank you again for your time in bat fandom, Grant Ingram, uh, Grant, thank you so much for the message. Jamie, I'll let you take this one first. Um, what would you thought about Nolan doing a fourth movie, a fourth Batman movie, and then kicking off a shared universe? My thought on that right along had always been have uh, Blake be Batman and running into other DC characters at some point during that fourth film and preparing to lead into a Justice League like they run into some huge problem that they cannot deal with on their own and they'll the movie would end as whoever. I, I, don't, I don't even know what character I'd use for it without thinking about it, but basically addressing Blake is like, what do we do now? And Blake's saying there's one guy that always knew what to do, insinuating that he would have to go find Bale to come back and be Batman and lead them against whatever this threat was. So flimsy as that may sound, that's just always what I had in mind for it. Mm-hmm. If they were going to lead that into a universe. As far as why Nolan didn't do it, because it's a hell of a lot of time for him to be overseeing that entire universe, which is basically why he stopped after man of steel because he just didn't want to be that involved with it. He wanted to basically be open and shut with his Batman story and, you know, kind of godfathered Superman in a little bit and realized the, they were going to expand that out into much more than he wanted to be involved with, as I understand it. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, nah, peace. See you guys later. And went on to do other things because he's that kind of a director. He doesn't want to be committed to one thing for his entire career. Understand. Well, yeah. Yourself. Yeah. That's exactly it. He's, he's Christopher Nolan and he didn't want to just make Batman movies. He, he made his three uh, and he want, you know, and, 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 and all the things. people that complain about how he may have ended dark Knight rises. I, I submit to you. The reason he did that is exactly because of what happened to Tim Burton. He didn't want somebody coming in there and Schumachering his, vision of Batman and screwing up whatever legacy he may have left. Now, whether or not you agree with that, that's what happened to Burton or not. Nolan is the kind of guy that he wants to do his thing his way. And if you don't like it, then that's just tough shit. So it was a, you know, beginning, middle and end for his Batman story. And that's exactly what he wanted. And he pulled the plug so nobody else could really come in and do anything with it. After the fact, they just had to Mm -hmm. start over from square one, which what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's exactly it is he he wanted his little closed off thing that's his. And, and that was that um, if 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 he wanted to expand the universe post Dark Knight Rises, I, I would have been all for it. Uh, I would have loved it, but I wouldn't have wanted a whole movie of John Blake Batman. I, I wouldn't really be interested in that. For me, those movies Christian Bale is Batman, that Bruce Wayne is Batman. So that was what I would want to see. I would, I'd bring him back a lot quicker than the final moments of the, the fourth film. But are yeah, you saying I wish... my filmmaking isn't good ideas? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I'm you're, saying, you're right. I'm really saying John Blake Batman sucks and isn't a real character. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so <laughs> I, I, I like where you're going, but um, I would do that like in the first scene instead of the last scene. Um, First but yeah, scene, I, I, let the brother cut his teeth for crying out loud. Jeez. No, no. The, the, uh, the opening of the dark Knight strikes again, again, which is Christopher <laughs> Nolan's fourth movie, the credits, you get the bat symbol and it's in smoke and it comes towards the screen, just like in the last couple ones. And then you see a street, just a, the, the, the rain falling on the street and all of a sudden, from out of frame, comes the dead face of John Blake falling on the street. His throat has been slit by just a two-bit mugger because John Blake sucks. And so, <laughs> um, and uh, and then immediately, Gordon is like, "Well, this is this is awkward. Let's let's get this guy out of here." And so he calls Italy collect. Uh, and he's like, I know you're supposed to be dead, but you fix the bat symbol. I'm not stupid. Um, this loser you left in charge didn't last a week. So if you could just come on back, come on back, kick these orphans out of Wayne Manor and let's just get back to the way things should be with Batman and Gotham. I'd still watch that as, yeah. as, as much as I'm laughing and as, as much as I'm mentally scoffing at you, I'd still watch that. <laughs> Uh, anyway, okay. Two more messages. Let's go. This is from Duncan McKay. It says, Hey, Andy and Jamie, I think it would be cool if you did more videos on YouTube. I was on the Holy Batcast YouTube channel and around the BVS time, you did tons of videos, trailer reactions, collectible unboxing, and I really enjoyed them. I think you should do more from a 15 year old bat fan, Duncan, Duncan. Thank you for the message. I'm trying, I'm trying to do more. Um, but I found the coolest thing. Jamie, did you see what I posted on the YouTube channel this week? No, I, I don't it's, get a chance to watch those very much. It's okay. Honestly. It's okay. Um, so I was, I was at home in Illinois. My brother-in-law is a big video game nerd, and he unearthed this TurboGrafx-16 Batman game that was never released in the States. And I had never seen it or heard of it before. And so I recorded that and put that on the YouTube channel, which was kind of cool because I was like, this is a Batman game that's like been lost to time and somehow we dug it up. Um, so anyway, long story short, check that out. But also I'm trying to do more with the YouTube, the, the YouTube channel. And as I said at the beginning, just subscribe and I'll keep trying to do that. So thank you, Duncan. I'm glad you liked them. I guess I could buy more toys and unbox them. That's always fun. <laughs> um, All right, one last one, and then we're done. Condor Zolander, he says, Hey, Holy Batcast family, do you think Al Pacino would have been a good penguin in the Dark Knight trilogy? Um, Condor, thank you for the question. Uh, Since we were just talking about the Dark Knight trilogy, Jamie, what do you think? 
I don't think Pacino. I would have a great deal of opposition to that. I, I like more of Pacino's stuff than I don't. And I, I think he probably could have brought something to that role, but it probably would have been a lot of yelling. But it's not like <laughs> I, what are you talking do about? What are you part, talking so. about? Al Pacino, quiet, nuanced, subtle. In downplay. 1975, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'd watch it. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Um, I don't know. I, I he wouldn't be the. I think the the logic, or he wouldn't have been my first choice. He wouldn't have been. He wasn't even on anyone's shortlist. I don't think. But I'd have, I'd have been interested to see what he did with it. Sure. I see Dustin Hoffman more than Pacino, but that doesn't mean Pacino wouldn't have worked. I know. Pacino's good. Probably would have been a scarier penguin than we're used to. So it would have been like, ooh, ah, 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 ah. It, That's exactly what it would have been. <laughs> um, all right, there you go. That's it for the Wayne Manor Mailbox. Thank you guys for getting through that. And whew, I feel so accomplished. I feel like we were so productive this evening. It's fantastic. Um, again, Help me improve the Wayne Manor mailbox, please. If you've got an idea for a little intro, uh, maybe you are a composer and you can write us a little jingle or whatever. Again, get creative. Send those to holybatcast at rf4rm.com. That's also, if you've got a question, comment, or whatever that you want to send to the Wayne Manor mailbox, send those also to holybatcast at rf4rm.com. Please and thank you. The other thing we always ask you to do, if possible, is to leave an iTunes review. It is a quick and easy way you can show your support for the show um, because, you know, the more reviews you get, the more you get bumped up in searches. Also, the more people subscribing. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do that too. It only takes a second. So I know I'm asking a lot of you guys. You don't have to do it all. Just pick one thing to do. I don't care. Uh, I, you know. You got enough going on in your life. I don't want to just be an extra burden. So pick one thing. iTunes review, great. Patreon, great. A jingle for Wayne Manor Mailbox, great. But you don't have to do all three. I forgive you. It's fine. Um, But if you were nice and left us an iTunes review, we like to say thank you by reading them. So let's see what we got here. We're up to 237, which is pretty rad. So I think this this is the, the latest. All right, it says... It says, all hail the bat cast. That sounds kind of familiar. Um, it's from why so serious 19. It says, I started listening to this podcast over a year ago, looking for some up to date Batman news. And I've never looked back. And he seems like a genuinely good dude who seems to look for the positive, even in the worst of Batman content, cough, cough, Batman and Robin. I especially love the animated series reviews. And that's what truly inspired my love for the character. If you love all things, Batman, this is the podcast for you. I don't think I read that one. I think that one is new. So thank you. Sounds all that familiar, no. Yeah, thank you, Why So Serious 19. And uh, uh, don't get me wrong, Batman and Robin is horrible. I I, I make no mistake. Um, I'm just over being mad about it. All right, here we go. This review is from Dave1938. It says, Best Batman Podcast. It says, Andy and Jamie are two of the best who weekly discuss everything Batman. I've been listening to this dynamic duo for almost two years now, and this is the podcast I look forward to the most each week. Their joy and positivity on DC Films is a breath of fresh air in a sea of negativity. Now they call a spade a spade but they do it with class. I enjoy their interviews with various folks who've been associated with the Dark Knight, and my personal favorite segment of the show is the Wayne Manor Mailbox. <clears throat> Keep up the good work, guys. Uh, thank you, Dave, 1938, and... um We will keep up the good work as best we can. Thank you for writing in. Um, So again, if you have not left an iTunes review, please do. We would really appreciate it. But that is where we're going to wrap up this episode of Holy Backcast. Jamie, good to be back. Thanks for joining as always. Right on, man. It was good to be here and get things a little cleaned up. I know, right? <laughs> this was our spring cleaning episode. Spring cleaning. There we go. I like The that. Wayne Manor mailbox. It's a little early for spring, but that's okay. Um, even though, I don't know what I'm talking about. Last week, we both, we reviewed the entire long Halloween. So, I know. It was really cool to go back and do that all over again. I know. Um, I was a little worried that people would think they got cheated because we didn't really record a new episode. But most people were glad that we did it, so I, f- I feel good. Well, as you said, we were busy watching Diet Batman. I know, exactly. <laughs> um, 
Hashtag Wakanda sometimes. <laughs> I can't believe you did that. <laughs> I thought Leroy was going to shit when you did that. Really did. <laughs> Sorry, Gotham forever, Wakanda sometimes. Oh. You know it. Um, Black Panther anyway. was great, though. I, I, I love it. Well, if you guys out there loved your visit to Wakanda and seeing Diet Batman, we're going to review that on the Real Fans show. So make sure you check out Real Fans for Real Movies, where we're going to talk about Black Panther. So... A little plug for that show. Check that out. Um, but we're not going to do it here because this is about Batman, who's number one, who beat the crap out of T'Challa because he don't need no herb. Batman does it through strength of will. Don't need no herb. Just saying. Yeah, we're we're going to get hip deep into that vibranium discussion too. All right. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Don't at me. I liked Black Panther. Don't at me. Um, anyway, Jamie, it's been fun. Um, thank you as always. Uh, if the folks aren't already following you, where should they do that? You can follow me on the tweets at Bat Raider 3960, or you can find me dwelling through all of the various real fans groups on Facebook. Perfect. Um, anyway, thank you, Jamie. Thank you guys out there for downloading the show. Please do subscribe to the show on iTunes. Please leave us a review. And as Michael Keaton's Batman says, I want you to tell all your friends about me. Um, visit HolyBatCast.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Just search for Holy Batcast and you will find us. But that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Batcast is brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. Remember, the thoughts and opinions shared by the participants are theirs and theirs alone, and do not represent the companies or organizations they happen to work for. moves from planet to planet it's known as the collector of worlds but its true name is brainiac